Hello, once again, Eridos here, and today we are going to be taking a, another uh, look at a Let's Paint video for miniature making. I had uh, someone uh, watch my uh, Let's Build video for the uh, Kingdom Death Dragon King, uh, Roscoe from the Catbox Forums. He also has a YouTube video where he does uh, stuff involving... Uh, Warhammer miniatures. He also had a 3D printing uh, for some scenery. I'll put a link in the description to uh, to his channel so you can take a look at his stuff. Sorry, I'm just a little tired right now. Anyway, I got two miniatures of the Super Dungeon Explorer series. I got Konichi Candy and Tabby Brook Mage. Uh, I'm going to put uh, Konichi Candy to the side because we're just going to be doing that on a separate video. We're going to take a look at the Tabby Brook Mage right now. Let me just get her out of the box. Comes in a nice Ziploc bag there. I also have the card in there, but I'll take care of that later. And we'll just take her out of the Ziploc bag. And there. There is the Tabby Brook Mage. Nice little cat girl there. So you can see these models are provided, uh, these uh, miniatures are provided unpainted and they're made of very soft plastic. So you don't have to worry too much about them breaking or anything. But it's also a detriment to actually painting these things because soft plastic miniatures, I have found quite a few problems with these because after a certain amount of time, uh, the paint will start getting sticky. I'm actually looking into several ways to prevent this. Um, one preventive measure is just to leave them out for a few weeks to make sure the paint uh, fully cures to the model. Another measure is to, sorry. Uh, another measure is to uh, probably put one of those uh, moisture packets, you know, like the ones you find with electronics and furniture and clothing. Don't use the ones with uh, beef jerky; that would just cause more problems. And of course, just leaving them out and not putting them in, in uh, containers, although in some opinions that's kind of not an option for me. And I have found that a lot of these, I have had a few get sticky and some that didn't for some reason. So I'm actually going to try something here in order to make sure that the paint will actually stick to this without problem. And that is, I'm going to take uh, the miniatures and I'm going to put them in this container filled with warm water and a solution of dishwashing soap. Let it soak for about 40 minutes, hour, maybe two hours at most to make sure that any kind of chemical that was on the miniature to get it uh, out of the mold will be gone so that it won't affect any of the, uh, any of the paint. So anyway, and after it's done soaking, we're going to take a small the uh, soft tip, uh, soft uh, bristle toothbrush and just scrub it under the water a little bit and then rinse it off in warm water scrubbing it a little bit more to make sure that all of the chemicals off of this from the uh, molding procedure are gone and that it won't affect the uh, the paint whatsoever so Anyway, we're going to fast forward after this because this is going to take, a, as I said, it's going to take 45 minutes to about two hours depending on uh, how long you want it to sit and how sure you want to be to uh, make sure all the chemicals are off. And we'll come back in, the, in, in a bit. Okay, after we've cleaned that, we've uh, did the wash. We've also have painted, we uh, sprayed on some nice white primer because we want this to be nice and vibrant and anime-like. Yeah, so basically use white, don't use gray or black because we want all the colors to be very bright and vibrant on this. I got my paint here, which I'm just going to have to shake up just a little bit here. I was shaking up before the camera started. As you can see on the picture, we need to paint the light blue on her dress, or her robe anyway, as well as the trim on her cloak, which we will then cover up with some black later. So we just got to take this out. We're going to take just a basic chisel brush here. Mm. Oh. Well, that was unexpected. Thankfully got on my arm. Yeah, it looks like I got a little 
dry here. Anyway, we're just going to take it and carefully paint it on the dress like so. As you can see, some of the white is peeking through. So it might take a few coats before we're done here. We also want to take care not to paint any of her hair or her ears. I'll reiterate that later when it comes up, but still, we don't want to cover up areas we're going to be leaving white. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going here. And since I don't want to have this video too long, we're just going to fast forward to me finishing painting the dress. Okay, and we are done with the light blue. Took a few coats to get it on the, her dress and whatnot. I also forgot to mention we were also going to paint the ball in her uh, scepter, which I left as one coat and so that there are uh, little white streaks in it to give it that nice little uh, swirling magical effect. Unfortunately, we did get some paint on her hair here and a little bit on her tail, but don't worry, we could probably we can fix that with a little bit of white paint. However, we need to keep going here, so we're going to take some dark uh, blue here. Make sure to shake that up. And we're going to start painting her cloak. Again, trying to take care to avoid the ears and tail here. I'll just dip. This one's not as thick. Because it hasn't been, I haven't had this as long, so we're just gonna carefully paint it on like so, making sure that we get it right in their neck. And as you can see, a little bit of the white's peeking through, so it might take a few coats to get right. Just gotta make sure we get the underside of our cloak too. You can see I didn't paint the underside of her robes yet, and that's for good reason, we'll explain later. And we have finished this. Had to uh, take a long time to do this in order to make sure that it at least looked even for the most part. There's still a few places where the white pokes out, but it should be good enough for now. During In between the coats, I did touch up some of the white areas that I didn't want to be covered in paint that I accidentally painted over. So now we're going to work on the next part, which is we're going to paint the inside of her ears. We're just going to have to do this by dry brushing just a little bit of a pink inside the ear. It's not terribly complicated, but... Mm -hmm. Takes a few times, but once you get enough of a coat in there, you should be able to get a nice little result. Okay, now for the other ear. This is going to be very fast. Since I'm dry brushing and not fully painting it, it's not going to take long to dry. There we go. That's done. I'm gonna cap that off. Put my brush over there while we go to the next step, which is. Hmm. Actually, I think we should do this one next. We're gonna take some brown here. Oh. Oh, good. Didn't fall on my uh, mat there. We're going to take the brown, and we're going to paint not only her staff, but we're also going to take a detail brush and paint her belt, as well as some stripes on her ears and her tail. Oh, it's a little tacky there when I painted over the overpaint. So, yeah, I'm just going to take some little bit of brown. Oh, I didn't get any on my brush there. Okay, there we go. Yeah, that might take a few coats, maybe just as long as the uh, cloak did. Again, it all depends on what kind of paint you're using. Some of it can be really runny and doesn't cover well in the first coat. Some will actually cover in the very first coat. 
also in order to get to behind this, because it's flexible plastic, we just bend this down temporarily just to get into the uh, area that's touching the hood. Yeah. So yeah, we'll come back to this after we've painted this entirely in. Okay, now that we've got the staff and her stripes on, we are now going to start painting the skin with a nice little bit of peach. Just gotta be very careful with the skin because we don't want to accidentally hit on the hair. And we also gotta cover the hands, so we're just gonna start here. And don't worry about the eyes, we'll take care of those when we get to take care of those. So, yeah. We also want to make sure we don't get the hair over here. I already had to repaint it three times, so once we take care of that, we will go on to the next step. Okay, there we go. We got the flesh tone nice and painted on there. Oh, wait. I think I got a little dot on there on the, uh, on the uh, staff. Repainted her eyebrows, which accidentally got painted over, as well as a few areas of her hair. Next up, we're going to take that little bell on her collar and the bell and jewelry on her tail and paint it in a bit of gold. Now then, it's not going to be perfect because this is just a yellowish gold, not a gold that looks weathered and whatnot. You'd have to actually do shading and whatnot, but we're just doing this as simply as possible because of its because of its uh, cartoonish nature. So yeah, there's loops here, so that's going to be that's going to need the detail brush and we're also going to need the detail brush to get right there in her neck so we don't uh, accidentally get on anything else. So yeah, once we're done painting the gold on, we'll go on to painting the next area. Okay, as you can see, we got gold in her collar and gold on her tail. Next, we're going to take some black and a very fine-tipped brush, and we're going to just do the details on her bell as well as the trim on her cloak, which is going to be a little tricky. And it's not something I can do easily on camera, but I can show you the start of it right there. Just easily and carefully just take your brush and glide it over the area so that you don't get on anything you don't need it on. It's going to take a bit of practice and I need this next to my face in order to do it so we will come back after I'm done with the trim. As you, as you can see we got the trim all painted along the edges of the cloak. Well I did miss that area but I'll get to that later. Right now I'm going to show you how to paint the eyes on these things and to be honest it's not that hard hard but it's also not that easy either you need to take a very fine point brush and carefully go along the edge of the eye don't worry if you get it inside the eye because quite frankly we do have another layer we have to put on this yeah so basically you're just lining in the eyelashes put a little extra flare there that's one eyelash I'm gonna cut back after we're done with the second eye okay we got the eyelashes in unfortunately a little too heavy on the that side there I also finished up her the detailing on her arms so now we're gonna start with step two of painting the eyes and this is gonna be the bit of a tricky part as you can see, as you probably already noticed, I've painted the entire head in uh, peach, so we're going to have to repaint the eyes in white. Just got to carefully dab it in there. Yeah. These things are raised out of the head, so it's not that hard to get the whites of the eyes painted and as you can see I'm covering over the areas I overpainted so yeah 
We got the whites of the eyes perfectly painted in there. But that is not the end. I'm gonna have to clean my brush here. Should be just dry enough after I'm done. Because we're gonna take this again. Make sure I got it nice and shaken up. And just a little bit on the brush, not too much. And we're just gonna carefully dot it in the center of the eye. And then spread it out from there. You wanna make sure that the eyes are nice and centered. Unfortunately, we are going to have to let this dry before we go on to the next step because we are not done with these eyes yet. Okay, paint's dried just enough for us to go to the next step, which is the finest parts of this. We have to put a tiny dot of black right in the middle of the eye for the pupil. Just carefully put it in there. And then we have to take our white. I'm going to have to switch bottles here. Clean off the brush. While I'm doing this, the black should dry just enough so I can do this. You can tell I'm kind of holding my breath here because this is one of the most delicate parts of the painting. Okay, I got the white on my brush. And we're just gonna carefully put a tiny dot on the bottom of the eye. Very lightly, don't press in or else you're just gonna get a big dot. Because we wanna save the big dot for the upper part of the eye. Like so. And there we have our anime style eyes for our little cat girl. Now, with the eyes done, yes, no cutting back because the eyes are completely done now. We are now going to go on to the base since we have our black out. I'm just going to open the bottle again. Yeah, I close these to make sure that they don't dry out. I'm going to take our brush. We're going to paint the entire base in black as well as the underside of her skirt. Because you're not really seeing much peeking out of there. I also painted the insides of her uh, cloak black as well to represent the blackness in the shadow in there. Now then, you're probably wondering what I'm going to be doing with the texture on the base because the base is textured. But again, we will get to that after we're done painting. Okay. As you can see, I got the black all the way around the base there. We're not done yet, but while we wait for it to dry, not to waste time, we want to keep this going. I'm going to take a little bit of reddish pink here. I think fuchsia is the proper term for it. Just dab a little bit on my brush and carefully put it in her mouth. Like so. And we are not done yet because we also have to paint her potions along her belt. Now then, I'm going to leave this out. Because, wait, actually, no, no, no. We got to use this first. Just carefully take the potion right here and just carefully paint around the straps of the belt. Like so. And some of the black came off on my finger. <laughs> Crud. Well anyway, that's gonna happen. Now then, I also got purple here. Just let me clean off my brush. 
Yeah, maybe I should have did this before painting the base, but again, I was not thinking in the proper steps. Take the purple, dab just a little. Yeah, when you shake it up, there should be just enough in the cap to get you by. And we're just gonna carefully paint the second potion right here with just a touch of purple. Right there, ease it in there, and yeah, that should be just enough to get by on. Now for the other two, hmm. well, I'm going to put this over here, and I think we'll paint one of them in a nice little green. Just give me a second to clean off the brush. Spin it around to make sure I have that nice tip again. Shake up the bottle. Oop. And then we take a little bit in the cap. Lightly dab it on the brush, not too much. And I say about that one. Should be green. Dab there, little dab right there, a dab right there, and right there. That's the green potion. Now for the final color. <laughs> you just clean off the brush. Make sure to keep the tip. And I think we should just reuse this for the final potion. Should work. Again, dab just enough from the cap. Just take a quick look and carefully dab the sides. And yeah, I'm going to have to cover that. Anyway. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to repaint some of the uh, paint that rubbed off on the base and we'll go on to the final step. And now we've gone to the final step. I'm going to take a little bit of gray on a fan brush here. Oh, wait, hold it. I need to moisten it up here or else it's just going to be very hard. Okay, I'm going to put some on my fan brush. Brush off just a little because we are going to dry brush the top of the base in order to give it that nice stone texture. Like so. Just be careful. And anytime it goes, don't worry about the edge. Anything that goes over the edge, you can repaint over in black. So, yeah. Just carefully stick your brush in there. And just lightly brush the, sil the gray right in there. Sorry if I'm not showing it on camera too well, but I got some little on the skirt there, but once we get the black touched up, that is done. This is what the Tabby Brook Mage will look. Sorry about that. Give me a second. I'm just checking. I'll make sure. Okay. It's good. It's fine. That is the Tab of Book Mage completed, painted. Just needs a little bit of touch up. And I still have to uh, get clear coat on it to make sure that the paint doesn't scuff or get uh, scratched off. After I'm done clear coating, I'm going to leave this out for a few days, if not for a week or two, to make sure that the fumes do not make this paint tacky again. And that is my painting video for the Tab of Book Mage. Now then, once we are done, next video will be hopefully Konichi Candy and her um, partner... Um, uh, candy, yes, yeah, soda, uh, candy and soda, I believe. Um, 
yeah, it's been a while. I have to check the names. Anyway, that is my Let's Paint video, and I hope to see you again next time.